Well, glad to have you back. Nigeria's headline inflation rate decreased to 32.15 percent in 2024, despite the recent hike in pump prices of petrol nationwide. The latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed uh, that this figure represents a 1.25 percentage points decrease from the 33.4 percent recorded in July 2024, and the second consecutive monthly slowdown in inflation after a persistent rise in nearly two years. The NBS and its Consumer Price Index report posted on its website on Monday said the drop also signaled a slow pace in increase in average prices levels compared to the month uh, previous month. Mr. Temitokpel Moshri is an investment strategy and management senior associate with Afri Invest West Africa. He joins me live from the United Kingdom. Good afternoon, Mr. Moshri. It's good to have you on the show. Good afternoon, Solus. Thank you for having me. Well, we see that inflation has declined two consecutive months. I'm interested in uh, what you were expecting and what do you think could be responsible for this? All right, thank you, Tulu, for having me once, once again. Um, well, we saw the decline in inflation to 32.5% um, from 33.5%, all the way from the peak of 34.5%. Uh, it was likely expected because if you look at the base effect, in a way, it contributed to the decline in inflation that we saw. In addition to that, your rest, the entry, um, harvest season, so all of that contributed to the decline in inflation. However, if you check month on month, well, that also showed some level of deceleration from you know over three percent prior to the two months of deceleration that we have seen to 2.2 percent right although that is still elevated compared to what will bring inflation to to a pass that uh we think is sustainable hmm. are you there yes i can hear okay, you okay good so so it's good to start on that note, but many would also say that are we feeling the impact uh, of the hike, of course, in pump price? Uh, have we started seeing that on our inflation figures? Well, thank you for that question. I think it was a major surprise for many to see that inflation have continued to decelerate, especially for last month. And despite the increase in fuel price, for instance, this year so far, we have seen about 15% increase in the price, the price of PMS to about 700 and the adjustment that we're expecting to 900, 1,000. That means we're already talking about nearly 25 to 30% increase, yeah. right? But then the impact may not be so apparent on the, on the numbers that we saw for August. We can begin to see much of that in September this month when, when, the, when the report will come out in October. But then I want you to also emphasize that Prices of items have gone up substantially. If you look at the price watch uh, published by the MBS alongside CPI, the, 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 the MBS has some selected commodities that uh, they typically publish regularly. It shows that within the last two months, prices have doubled, you know, have increased more than doubled across major items, especially food items, right? So that mirrors exactly what is happening or what Nigerians are uh, experiencing. But for the impact of this recent jump in uh, PMS price to inflation, yes, it's going to affect it's going to affect what we we'll see going forward. I, I think the only caveat is that um the impact of base effects, the fact that we are seeing some interventions from the fact that government is supplying fertilizers to some farmers and other interventions in terms of um uh, the removal of import duties, all of that may provide support, uh, which would somehow reduce the impact of this PMS on on um, on, on inflation. Ultimately, uh, and I also suspect that you know sellers are also a bit reluctant to push up price substantially because you know consumers have been grappling with consistent increase in prices since 2022, and it's very important to also know that. What we are seeing today, we saw episode of that in 2022 when inflation decelerated all the way uh, um, after the COVID, right? 2021, all the way to 2022. <laughs> but immediately, Russia invaded Ukraine in February 
right? We saw inflation jump substantially in March 2022. So a repeat of that is what we are we are going to see now. But why this time is is different is because you know in 2022, like I said, inflation was already on the decelerating part. It was already around 15 percent before uh, we now saw a surge. In, 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 in crude oil prices, we saw a surge in PMS price and other items. This time, we have been seeing consistent increase in inflation since 2022. So, the fact that consumers are also laid back because they would continue to challenge producers in terms of how much of prices they can increase. And, uh, you know, producers would also want to sell. They are currently grappling with um, 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 a pushback by customers. So all of those factors would reduce the level of adjustment that producer can uh, uh, put this PMS increase in price on, 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 on general price level. So I think to, to an extent, this will affect um, inflation, but maybe not as much as the experience of what we saw in 2022. Um, and uh, if even if we see just 2%, 2.2% month-on-month um, increase in inflation, we are still likely going to uh, we're still going to see about 31 percent inflation rate by the end of the year and if we miraculously get about 1.5 percent or 1.6 percent in a month on month inflation maybe before the end of this year we would talk about a 25 26 percent inflation but by and large inflation is expected to just be elevated above 25 percent by the end of this year and the impact of other factors like um you know, we talk about all the, the that region that is affecting um, that that is going to have a material impact on inflation and exchange rate is also a bit of challenge that we have to watch because if you look at the breakdown of those inflation number you see that despite the deceleration that we saw in August imported food inflation remained elevated in fact it came in at about it went up by uh, 34 percent year on year that's for imported food inflation. So uh, general food inflation is still well above the 36, 37%. But the trend has been encouraged because if you look at the trend from 40% right now, so if you pick all of these factors together, the fact that there's flooding in the food bet region and the exchange rate components because um, Naira to dollar and other currencies still elevated. So if you pick all of these factors together, you know, it might, you know, uh, suggest that inflation will stay a bit elevated for this this year. Maybe next year we can begin to see some positive impact of some of the policies that we are seeing uh, at the moment. You mentioned interventions which are very critical at this uh, at this time, considering the effect of uh, what we face uh, as a country: fallout of subsidy removal, exchange rate, uh, and all of that. But specifically. Uh, you talked about fertilizers, uh, talked about seedlings being donated by government and all of that. I'd like us to look at some specific uh, uh, interventions that you also think can impact on people. You know what is going on here. You get the feedback. You're following the news. How do you think government can uh, properly you know, get to those people that need to get this support from, from them? What sort of intervention are you, are you thinking, are you suggesting for government moving forward so i think that um uh, like i said people are not really feeling the impact of yeah. two months consecutive uh, decline in inflation right and um, we have seen a bit of um, interventions here and there from the fertilizer uh, distribution to farmers the fact that import duties has been removed on certain items but then uh, you know Yes, or, or, inflation is still elevated. So, I, I think on the one hand, we are seeing the, um, the 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 move by monetary policy authority to keep interest rate elevated. It's quite obvious. much of this work must come from the fiscal side, right? The uh, the um, um, elevation or uh, elimination of tariff is a fiscal policy. Direct intervention by giving trucks and fertilizer is a direct policy. So that should be sustained. And we have a lot of beautiful policies. I think the most important thing right now is to ensure that these policies are followed to the later from the policy and program formulation or development to the execution. The uh, government has to follow to ensure that every fertilizer given to farmer 
is not diverted. Every intervention, food that is available at food banks are, are, are distributed adequately. So I think all of those policies are really important at this point. But more importantly, because no intervention is sustainable, someone must pay for every intervention. More importantly, on the sustainable part, we have to work on how the Nigerian economy can become so buoyant such that affordability will not become a concern. If prices are elevated and um, people can afford it, you won't get to hear, hear complaints. The impact will not be so dire on, on the lives of people. In other words, policies must be geared towards economic growth such that minimum wage will be looking at over 200,000, 300,000, even a million naira, and is a function of the capacity of the economy, right? So on the short-term um, 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 strategy, we already seen a couple of them, um, uh, you know, uh, from... A, um, a, a subsidy, you know, you talk to well, you know, um, um, labor uh, labor can also get a better wage because the, the, the only sustainable way, the only sustainable part to ensure that people can afford uh, things in Nigeria is to get a better wage. All the interventions are short term and most of the interventions we see around would only continue to affect government fiscal deficit massively. And you know, once government fiscal deficit is widening, the, the debt condition of our uh, debt stock would continue to go up. And you know, that's also another complication. We don't want a situation where government debt to be so high to the extent that we enter a debt trap, a situation where we would not be able to repay. So it's a very delicate balance such that interventions must be short-lived, but the economy must be put on a sustainable path such that people can afford basic things, even when prices are rising, wages are also rising by that proportion. And that's what is keeping advanced economies afloat. When prices are jumping up, wages are also growing by almost equal proportion. So these economies are able to stay afloat. Hmm. Well, it, it, it sounds so, 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 so interesting. But let's look at uh, uh, moving forward. We expect the MPC to sit on Monday and Tuesday next week. It's official. They've said that's going to happen. Uh, considering this shift in inflation, do you think that uh, when they sit around that table on Monday, they will think of retention or another shift in rates? So I think that the current inflationary trend seems encouraging. I, I know that the Monetary Policy Authority will want to look at a lot of factors. The inflation we just discussed is a very important indicator to watch. Um, they would also look at the trajectory of foreign reserves. Right now, the reserve is at 30, gross reserve, $37 billion. That seems to be the highest level since uh, Q4 of 2022. They would also look at um, what is happening to economic growth as well. Uh, you know, last growth number, we saw that it was slightly above um, 3%. And uh, the purchasing managers in this, which also measures the activities, in the economy or with um, with purchasing managers you know when purchasing managers buy a lot when they do a lot of activities suggest that the economy is thriving so between uh, june of last year and june of this year we have seen that the index remained at contraction at contraction point below 50 but we saw a blip in august that suggests that you know activities have improved so i believe that because uh, the economy is we, we have seen major increases you know and I, I think that the Monetary Policy Authority would want to wait to see how far all of this would impact the economy. Rather than increasing interest rates, they would want to see, okay, inflation is trending downward, and uh, we have to wait. They would want to wait for, you know, the impact of what the fiscal authority is also doing. So ultimately, I believe that it's going to be a hold because an increase in interest rate at this moment would only mean a bit of its location in the economy. And if you want to look at it on an on international standard, we are seeing some rate cuts happening in advanced economies. You know, the conversation about high interest rate in Nigeria. Associate, he works with Afri Invest West Africa. He joined us from the UK. Thank you so much. Uh, we we'll hope to have you in some other time. To have you in some other time. All right, let's move to talk.